Five updates to my Obsidian study workflow. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about my current study workflow. I've previously created a video on how I studied for my British Computer Society exams. However, I've started doing more online courses, so I adapted my workflow to help me take notes from these online courses. As ever, the speed of Obsidian and plugin development has moved on since that video. Nevertheless, these developments have simplified my study workflow, so I thought I'd share them with you. Hopefully, this workflow will help you create your own study workflow using Obsidian. If you're interested in more techniques, tools, and hacks for your workflow, please subscribe to my channel. If you've seen my previous video, you will know that my study workflow has five steps incorporated into Obsidian. The first step is creating a mind map to provide an overview of the subject I am learning. I then create a study plan to structure my study task and track progress. I use the Pomodoro method to work through my study tasks. I use the outlining method to create notes that summarize content into revision notes to understand the content better and be able to help me explain it to someone else. I finally create a question bank and use spaced repetition and active recall to remember my notes and test myself before the exam. I've made the following changes since my last video. I now use a mind map plugin instead of relying upon Miro. I use the day planner plugin to plan my revision schedule and Pomodoro sessions. I've incorporated an outliner shortcut technique to capture notes quicker during online teaching sessions. I also use an app called Text Sniper to capture text from online classes to use in my revision notes. Finally, I started using the Obsidian to Anki plugin to streamline my question bank creation instead of using my Python script. Whenever I start a course or prepare for an exam, I create a mind map. The mind map aims to capture the different areas of the subject and help organize the different topics and subtopics. I used to create mind maps using Miro, but now I use an Obsidian plugin called Mind Map by James Lynch. The mind map plugin uses the outline structure of a note to build up a mind map. Let's see it in action. Once you install the plugin, you can set up a shortcut to open the mind map pane. I'm using command M to open it. I start with the subject as the main heading. I then usually list out all the topics relating to that subject as a list. Once I list out all the topics, I try and group topics into subheadings and I drill down these topics to find other subtopics I need to cover. While I'm reviewing the subject, the mind map pane automatically updates. Thus, I can close down topics and subtopics and focus on other areas. At the end of the brain dump, I have a list of topics and subtopics that I must revise and an organized mind map. The mind map note usually becomes my task list to start my revision, and I can go back to it and update it when needed. I find time blocking an excellent way to plan my day and manage my revision tasks. Usually I would do this in Google Calendar, but now I found a plugin called Day Planner to do just that. The Day Planner plugin lets you create a plan on your note and visualize it within Obsidian, track where you are throughout the day, and provides a status bar of tasks now and next. I've also been using it as a Pomodoro. Let's have a look at it in action. I installed the Day Planner from Community Plugins. In Day Planner, I have the following settings. Set the day planner mode to file mode. The file mode generates a day planner node for every day you use it. The alternative is to use command mode. Command mode inserts the daily planner within an existing node. I set the complete past planner items to on. This setting automates the crossing off of tasks at times go past. I turned off mermaid Gantt options, which shows the planner in a horizontal direction. I turned on the status bar, circular bar of progress, and now and next to show a circular bar on Obsidian, which acts as a countdown to the remaining time and shows the next task. Finally, I switch on the task notification, which sends me a message when I start my next task. When Obsidian starts, the day planner creates a note in the day planner folder. I created a day planner template based on the Pomodoro technique, and I insert this template into this day planner note. This template breaks down my day into different Pomodoro blocks. I list the tasks for the day and move the incomplete task throughout each block as I finish a Pomodoro block. I have set option D to bring up the day planner. The day planner goes through the day and each block is telling me where I am. If I need to close the day planner pane, I can still see the next task at the bottom. Once a block is completed, a notification is sent. I use the outliner method to capture notes during classroom sessions. When using Obsidian, the fold heading and fold indent features makes it easier to manage the note. But sometimes maintaining these outlines while taking notes in a classroom setting is challenging, 
For example, sometimes lists are out of order and need to be reorganized or the teacher jumps between different sections. I've also started using a keyboard shortcut, which I saw on the Linking Your Thinking YouTube channel. In the video, they suggested setting shortcuts to control the outlining features of Obsidian to organize your notes quickly. I've set the following commands in the setting swap keys. Command one to close all headings and lists. Command two to toggle the fold on the current line. Command three to swap lines up. Command four to swap lines down. By doing this, I can quickly move my outlines and focus on the areas I want and reorganize the lists. Using keyboard shortcuts makes it easier to focus on the quality of the note without breaking your concentration. Sometimes I may want to capture the text on screen into Obsidian during online live courses or videos rather than type it all out on my note. An app that I use is called Text Sniper. Using Text Sniper, I can capture non-selectable text and paste them into a note just like a screenshot. I have used it on YouTube videos, online courses and PDFs. Let's see it in action. Once Text Sniper is installed, I use F1 to activate it. Once activated, I select the area with the text I want. It copies the text into clipboard. Then Text Sniper tells you once it's complete. But all you have to do is paste it into your note. Using Text Sniper has saved me a lot of time from retyping text from different sources. I have been using Anki for many years, just like many students. It's an excellent tool for revision and question practice. In my workflow, I have created question banks from my revision notes. Previously, I've been using the Python scripts to extract questions from my question bank to Anki. Now there is a plugin called Obsidian to Anki. It has many great features, including tag support, creating decks, maths, image, and markdown formatting. Let's walk through an example of how to set up a question note in Obsidian. Once installed, the plugin scans through your notes looking for questions to export. You need to make sure Anki is open and Anki Connect must be installed. I created my notes to keep all questions relating to a topic. At the top, I added the deck that I wanted to create. I used the target deck keyword to set this. Next, for each question, you need to create a start keyword. The following line refers to the Anki card format. In the example, I use basic. Next, I add in the question. I use the back keyword to capture the answer. I use the tag keyword to capture tags to use in Anki. Often these are subtopics of the subject I'm studying. Finally, each question needs to have an end keyword. You keep repeating the structure for all the questions you need. You need to have Anki open and click on Obsidian to Anki command when you want to export. The plugin will search through the notes and create the deck and export the questions as cards in Anki. Users can alter the keywords in the plugin settings if they want to use other keywords. As ever, Obsidian continues to enhance its features and the community plugin fills in features to let you modify your study workflow. My current study workflow is by no means perfect, so I would be interested if you can think of ways to improve it and let me know in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and like if you found this helpful. If you enjoyed this video, check out my original video on Obsidian studying workflow or another one of my Obsidian videos.